Well, the title of the lecture is A New World After Post-COVID-19 Crisis. Uh, the COVID-19 crisis is still with us. Even if it seems that the first waves of the pandemic is fading away. But its economic, social and political consequences are substantial. Recession, increase of unemployment, bankruptcies, income uh, deg degradations, poverty and increase of debt. And in fact, all this needs large effort to overcome. It is important to stress that the crisis is not just a cyclical one, but it is rather a structural, which means that it affects all of the elements of the socio-economic formation. In many respects, it is not new. Some of the old problems came to the surface are demonstrated in a dramatic way. In fact, uh, the crisis uh, somehow catalyzed these problems. Consequently, a structural crisis, they call, call for more than promoting measures, promoting recovery, but rather for strategies, project and policy measures. I share the view, share the view that something new quality has to be created, something like a restart, similar what happened after the World Wars. Well, the tasks are complex and uh, there are several issues which have to be addressed. I just try to select uh, one of the most important. In terms of technostructures, the new energy revolution and the role of sciences or the knowledges should be mentioned. In the first industrial revolutions, the technological innovations and new energy resources were closely related. They were in interaction. Steel engine, uh, uh, coal, steam engine, oil, combustion engine, electricity and different type of devices. But in the last about 100 years, the industrial revolutions remained uh, on the same basis on the basis of hydrocarbons and new, really new, not new energy resources came into the picture. In fact, the new technologies rather conserved the old energies, uh, like, uh, you know, the information technology hub to discovery of new oil and gas resources or help to economize their use. Well, all energy resources have to meet four requirements for basic requirements they should be cheap they should be clean abundant and securely available none of the present energy resources hydrocarbons and nuclear meet them they are growing failing to it new energy revolution would be needed it's radical break with hydrocarbons and such alternative sources as solar energy in its very broad sense, and hydrogen uh, should come into the picture. The post-carbon uh, sources, hydrocarbon sources, would and should transform the whole technostructure and uh, on a great extent would respond to the challenges of protection of environment. For this, all the scientific and intellectual plus the financial technical potentials are available. What, and that applies to the EU as well. What is missing is really the determination, the readiness for cooperation. The other problem is science knowledge factor. But recently it is growingly used as a weapon. We are in the middle of an information war, and I think that it's not exaggeration to tell, to say that it's the world war. It is about fake news, manipulations, flourishing fake sciences, intervention into internal affairs like elections or external relations, cyber war, and so on. This can destabilize economies, societies, democracies, create tension, impose damages, on the communities and the individuals as well. 
the COVID crisis, 19 crisis, proved to be in this respect very dangerous. The responses should be complex. Strategies and problems would be needed. The responses should be both scientific and educational, short term and long term. Real uh, seek real responses of, of uh, our burning economic, social and political problems, encourage intensification of real scientific discussion and extend and improve the channel of information. In terms of regulation structure, regulatory structures, new model of social economic management and relation is needed. The general framework could be social market economy. And in this respect, the Lisbon Treaty pledges to, I quote, competitive social market economy. I think this has to be extended and real effort should be made for its implementation. My proposal I quote, democratic, competitive, and eco-social market economy. This means that the market is the basic coordination and regulation. But according even to the liberal and the early neoliberal theories, the market should be ethical, regulated, and sensible to social and ecological problems. But it is a rejection of corruption, oligopolistic behaviors. It assumes intervention for normal functioning of the market, normal functioning of the competition, and for reduction of social and economic damages. The objective competitive refers to the global market challenges. The principle, these principles were broken by ultraliberalism of the 90s, the Washington Consensus or shock therapies, and led to disastrous consequences. In fact, led to birth or illiberalism. So far, the effort to implement the model has been largely missing, both on national and EU levels. All this would measure, assume strategic thinking, addressing such strategic issues as structural transformation, growing social and regional inequities, broad social coordination of diverging interests. The crisis uh, raises the question of future of global and regional, I mean, EU integrations. As relations are damaged, that hurts important socioeconomic structures. Beyond contractual and institutional relations, the most damaging injury is real economic structure. Real integration in this sense means high intensity of relations, interconnectedness and interdependence. All these are source of the present level of efficiency and welfare based on extended local, uh, extended global allocation of resources and cost optimization. Any damage of relation mean, relations means losses. Losses in this respect, reduction of competitiveness, suboptimal performance, and worsening of general level of, of welfare. The process of downgrading relations and nationalistic isolation should be stopped. The road ahead is return to intensification of integration and the EU should play a strategic role, a special strategic role in this sense. In the EU level, I mention only two problems. Of course, there are several crises like growth crisis, like uh, uh, cohesion crisis or migration crisis. But in, in say for sake of consolidation, I focus only to, on two questions, and that the euro system, the reform of the euro system, and dealing with that crisis. Uh, in fact, the Maastricht decisions on monetary integration were born for 12 countries in 88-89, but they were tailored rather for six core countries. As a result, the Maastricht criteria focused on primarily to one single priority, and that is 
price stability. The requirement of convergence was practically neglected. Also in a heterogeneic monetary union, the stability and coherence are, or convergence are the two uh, necessary priorities. Of, of course, the explanation can be that Ireland and three Mediterranean countries joining in the 80s before Maastricht produced a spectacular convergence uh, catching up. And later, the same uh, well, applied to Central and Eastern European countries. The problem of economic and monetary union in the EU were related to several conceptual and constructual deficiencies. It would be too long to list all of these deficiencies, but at least three of them have to be mentioned. One was the overestimation of coordination and controlling role of the markets. It was very much assumed in the different documents of the euro introduction. But as it turned out, the market, instead of disciplining, rather inspired irresponsible attitudes, buying cheap votes or cheap money, buying votes or speculating on real estate and so on. And they only punished after votes, I mean the market, and it punished very cruelly. There were deficits in constructions on institutions and policies of monetary union, which after 2010, in the process of reform of the euro governance, were largely corrected, even if the full consolidation of the system not yet completed. Furthermore, the monetary integration uh, would assume strict adjustment and discipline of national policies. In fact, the break of the rules, sabotaging of the policies uh, and the free riding characterized all of the countries. We often speak about Greeks and breaking the rules, but that was not uh, the case. It, it really was characteristic for all of the other countries. There are now 19 members of the Eurozone. Its extension, six Scandinavians above than Hungary, is part of the reform process. I fully agree with those views that according to, uh, to which the integration of the euro in Hungary is a general national interest. In an excellent analysis of both Peter Akos, the former president of the Hungarian National Bank, he concludes, I quote, on the basis of thorough examination of economic arguments and facts, I cannot say other than that for an economy with similar size and structure and tradition like Hungary, the permanent use of separate means of payment and burdening the related cost and risk on the population is not advisable. End of the quotation. Now more than half of the Hungarian population stably supports the euro introduction. In fact, according to a recent public opinion research on the question, I quote, would you support the introduction of the euro replacing the foreign as soon as possible? From the total Hungarian population, 65, really nearly two thirds, responded yes. As it is analyzed by the boat Peter Akos, we should stress that on the basis of high eurozization of the, Europe, uh, the Hungarian economy, we are part of the euro area, which has to be distinguished from the eurozone. Theoretically, we can speak about dollarization or euroization if the proportion of these currencies exceeds uh, uh, the national currency, uh, exceeds 10% of national monetary circulation. There are no relevant and reliable data but this share of the euro in Hungary is substantial, probably exceeds 50%. In private transfers and retail sector, these shares are less extended, but there is no without exaggeration to say that we can observe a certain creeping euroization. In several sectors, the, 
important players for a women's sport are are paid in euro and in Croatia the level of euroization is much higher. As uh, both Peter Akos concludes, it is not exaggeration to tell that the Hungarian, Danish, Bulgarian, Czechs economic players are already long in the euro era and only the population of the state only the population and the states are outside. End of the quote. The finalizing of the euro construction would be an urgent agenda. Due to largely increase of heterogeneity of participating countries, as it is with uh, the East European uh, enlargement, besides the stability, the convergence should also become a strategic priority of the eurozone. The present cohesion crisis could be overcome by that and the futures can be avoided by this. There are several possibilities, but I think that the present euro uh, architecture should be supplemented by a set of cohesion and convergence structures. Also, I find that no transfer union often uh, you know, quoted is a slogan and I find it is highly misleading but I don't think that should be uh, this structure should be about money transfers in the brackets we should uh, note that great part of the transfers in reality are market transfers related to oligopolistic profits of large companies while the burdens of budgetary transfers fiscal transfers fall on the taxpayers, which raises, of course, delicate social and political questions. The new structures of the euro should be based primarily on programs and policies. One of the major integration deficits of our region is a weak presence and position of local companies, mainly small and medium-sized enterprises, on the global market. Among others, the supportive, program, supportive programs and policies could help acquisition and strengthening of this uh, of position of these companies on the external market and their entry and upgrading on the global value chains, which in fact would be supported by the transnationals uh, as well. The supportive, pro supportive programs could help sub-regional cooperation even transborder ones could be crisis prevention and uh, evasion measures for organizations or individuals like retraining re-employment among some we have to reach uh, a certain level of development according to some no doubt then the stability of the monetary union and the convergence are important but this convergence could be achieved not only from outside, but from inside as well. And in fact, I must to stress very much that we are interested in an economic and monetary union which promotes convergence from inside. It is encouraging that the developed members to think along these lines, like I can quote Michael and Mock. We need serious proposals for those who support the case of joining. The old bon mot no longer worried that one should not move into the house which is smoking. But this is not the case with a house which is half built. People buy half built houses as they can decide about the core of the wall or the place of the bus tube. I think that it would be a basic Hungarian interest to take part directly and actively in the final reform and completion of the Euro project. We should reconsider the slogan that the case is not urgent. The other strategic problem which has to be addressed is management and solution of debt problems. The indebtedness on a large extent is debt accumulation, debt accumulation uh, recently and it's about the debt which never will be paid back. Uh, well, 
the, the debt problem is one of the most paralyzing uh, problems, uh, issues of the development of the present European Union. The solution of the debt problems have budgetary, creditory and capital bond market dimensions. These are broadly discussed and I think that there are some hopes that, that we can have a certain step forward. As the crisis is structure one, more needed just more needed than just pumping money into the economy. In fact, it can be even dangerous as it would aggravate the indebtedness problem. In this respect, I refer to a warning of European Central Bank. I quote the following hundred uh, the flying hundred billions of euro and the declared separated amounts channeled for crisis management by individual member countries together result to the level of indebtedness one of the eurozone uh, which can substantially increase and lead to tension well in the eu beyond the crisis uh, vision uh, the COVID-19 had paralyzing impact. No serious structural reforms were uh, uh, implemented. But for the future, for rapid revival and restart, these structural reforms are utmost importance. Thank you very much.